the ATP Project. You're with your hosts, Steve and Jeff. Mate, we're missing the uh, the third musketeer today. Where is he? Mate, he's busy as a blue ass fly, as they say. So it's actually funny the Aussie vernacular. Yeah. A lot of the Americans, I think, he's busy. Right? He, he's flat busy. out like a lizard drinking, you know. So, um, so it's just you and I, Steve. Which I think are the best podcasts. Of course they yeah. are. Of course <laughs> they are. I mean, we, we, while while Matt's away, the mice will play. I mean, we we can have fun with this. This is a really cool podcast. I mean, numbers. Well, it is food by the numbers. So yeah. you know, a lot of people have been asking what do the different numbers mean around food yeah. um, and Steve it's something I'm always interested in as well too is and we've, we've done a couple of other episodes on Franken food we've mm. done some episodes on you know food isn't food anymore yep um, in terms of obviously you know genetic modification what's yep. lacking in the food a Hambrax mm. to health seminar we spoke a lot about the changes in food mm. some good some bad most bad let's face it you know lack of vitamins and minerals because mm. of soil degradation and all these sorts of things but today specifically we're going to talking about ingredients and things that are common eaten maybe by you but certainly by the general population yep. uh, that are alarming alarming is a is a good way to describe them uh yeah there's there, there's certain things you add to food that that are, you know enhance them and all that sort of thing and there's things you need to sometimes like preservatives but then there's foods that just make it say look good well, and you well, don't need it for well, example well i mean and and obviously We'll touch on MSG um, mm. because it's kind of important, but that's not the focus of what we're going to be talking about no. today. Um, you know, because there are natural flavour enhancers as well as you know synthetic and artificial yep. ones. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. Again, MSG you know, I learned a lot of people with um, asthma and other things need to avoid MSG, and I think they that's do. reasonably well known. Yep. Um, but f- uh, food colouring, yes, uh, which is also fascinating as well oh. too. Um, But Steve, you and I were having a bit of a chat about what we're going to talk about. And today we sort of wanted to sort of cover off on a few of the things that we're interested in and weird things that people are putting in their mouth, what they're made from and what they're doing in the body that, uh, you know, I think will probably, again, shock people a little bit. Oh, shock people, absolutely. I mean, there's, you know, there's there's also, there's there's, there's the conspiracy things like, I don't like colours because they're bad. Sure. But I like to say, well, I don't like colours because there's evidence showing that they're bad. And that's the way I like to look at things, which is, you know, what do they really do when you take them in, you know? And and this is really interesting. And and there's a whole lot of colours. There's a whole lot of, you know, they've got a little E and then a number beside it. And we sure. All, and, and some of them are actually good. For example, we use E100 here right. at ATB Science in our products. Which is turmeric. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's so, a colorant. And, and, and this is also a, a good counter, a good yep. flip side to that as well too. A lot of people see a number and they immediately go, it's evil. It's and evil. that's not the truth. No. Um, the truth is, is that uh, some numbers are bad and mm. some numbers are, as you say, with the E100, actually excellent for you so steve to shed some light on this mate what uh, what are we talking about here i mean again i look at and a lot of colors if you turn over the back of your labels a lot of people will look and see uh for example yellow i think it's yellow, ye- yellow lake isn't it um, yellow lake which is tartrazine uh, yellow which is uh uh e102 right and um sounds you know, very close to e100 it does and those so obviously they're, they're just marking that on the shade, correct? They they do, and and there was a major review called the tox toxolo- toxicology of food dyes. Right. So I'll let the yeah. How, uh, how how long ago is that paper? Uh, that was a few years ago when they when they looked at this. So it was 2012, and they looked at all the different dyes and they kind of acknowledged what they did in the body and and all that sort of thing. Since then, there's been more. Um, you know, problems with, um, you know, dyes found. But this is just a basic one that's had a lot of research and that sort of thing. Um, and, and you mentioned, for example, yellow colorings. Well, yellow number five, which is a classic uh, color, um, you know, they, they looked at yellow and they said, okay, let's look at what's in this dye. And they found that there were in, in, the, car, in the actual dye that was actually approved, there were carcinogens added into it. So they added carcinogens to get the color. Well, yeah. And carcinogens, for those that might not know, Steve? They cause cancer. And you know, proven right? to cause cancer. Yeah. L- like in this case, uh, benzodine. Is, uh, it might have heard of, of benzene, but yes. benzene is a much more toxic carcinogen. What? And that's found in the dye. Is that a heavy metal, Steve? What exactly no, is? No, it's a, it's a carbon ring, a ring of carbons, benzene right. ring. It's a classic thing in carbon. You might see a little circle with a, with a hexagon surrounded. Yep. That, that's a classic thing. And, and you find that a lot in organic chemistry. Right. And benzenes are t- typically toxic. Right. There are some, uh, some that aren't, but basically benzenes are very toxic. How are they created, Steve? Are they synthetically manufactured or do you know how In this case, they are. Right. Because, we, you know, this, this is a classic synthetic color. Right. And and before we go, well, let's just get natural colours. We've got some issues with those yellow colours too. Well, I like to say this too because somebody said to me the other day, oh, natural is best. And yep. look, typically you can say that natural 
you know, and it's a broad stroke. Mm. Yeah, natural's typically better, and I like natural. Mm. Um, but snake venom's natural, Stephen. That'll it, kill you. <laughs> it is belladonna's natural, all sorts of things. Yeah. So, so with these, um, you know, with with natural colourings, um, we had a look at a, 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 a. I won't mention any uh, companies, so I won't show this paper. But there's a technical data sheet here on the natural yellow colour, and one right. of the ingredients is a chemical called propylene glycol. Ah, uh, Steve, speaking from experience. Yes. When we were looking at bringing out a range of products, yep. we went out to a whole heap of different suppliers for um, uh, natural ingredients. And our brief is when we give it to Lindell is that the product must be natural. Yeah. They came back and they said, yep, tick, 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 natural, 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 went all the way through, yep, certified natural, blah, blah, blah. Mm. When we actually got the spec sheet, which yep. is the breakdown of what's actually inside the ingredients, which didn't come until after we had ordered the product, which is, again, we broke our own rule there. Mm. This is, we're talking several years ago now. Mm. Uh, by the way, we didn't use it. Uh, no, it actually contained... Um, Propylene glycol. Yep. Which, which is was not natural. Not natural at no. all. But yet, and, and, here's, and here's the trick, and it's like um, we were talking about organic, um, mm. you, know, uh, you know, chemistry and all the rest of it. Organic just means it contains carbon. Yes. So... The perception to the public is natural is made from nature. Yes. But the way that they've got around it is they've been tricky. They've probably got some lawyers involved <laughs> yeah. and, and they've changed what that definition is. And it is misleading, I would say, probably to 99 out of 100 people because Absolutely. it is not natural in terms of it is not derived from nature. No, it's not. Uh, and, and propylene glycol is related to ethylene glycol. Now, that's vastly more toxic chemical, but propylene glycol is a synthetic comp component and it's actually listed as a natural... You can actually call it natural if it contains propylene glycol. Do you know how they get around that, Steve? It's just... It, it's like saying... Um, it's legalese, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's like saying, um, oh, here's a cup of um, a beer. Now, it might contain... You know some impurities when you make beer. You know whatever other chemicals in it that when you're in the process, and they go, well, it's still beer, so it's still natural, even though it contains unnatural stuff. Right. So it's just a complete uh, misleading uh, for the public, and and this is where the trust in government breaks down, and this is where conspiracies come because you know if, if that's classified as natural and it contains eth uh, propylene glycol, which isn't natural, people start to question this stuff. Yeah. And it, it starts to become a bit of a, uh, a, a like, well, why would we trust the government? I mean, you've got to remember, this is the same government that brought us um, uh, dyes that are, that are out there, which are listed carcinogens in many other countries. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're well, a little bit... Because everyone thinks Australia's got great and, and, government. And again, Steve, I'm going to want to take down that conspiracy theorist track, but I'm not going to. But yeah. I, just, I think it was Thomas Jefferson that said, if the government's big enough to give you everything that you, uh, that you need, uh, that you want, they're also big enough to take away everything that you need. Yes. And you've got to be careful of big government. I don't like yeah. big government. No, I don't like uh, Because, again, typically you've got bureaucrats and people at the top that are making rules based on who's lobbying them, who's paying mm -hmm. the most amount of money, or what the consensus is at the time of... Of whichever community they're listening to which again you look at the food pyramid yeah. i mean we can give so many examples you know it's so funny because i know steve you flew down recently to a summit talking oh, yeah. about um you know um the industry in australia which is very similar in the uk and and us mm. and that as well too mm. i mean again each country have got their own uh, crosses yeah. to bear and, mm. and all the rest of it and look i think good governance and you came back steve saying look there's definitely some cowboys out there as well too so oh, yeah. not all government is bad not all regulations right. are bad right. obviously right. it's needed need but them. the problem was and i think you made a really great statement we're talking about things that are like the states they have generally regarded as safe right yeah, grass status. and and uh, you came back and they were talking about um the protein and the, and the unfortunate uh, uh, oh, girl yeah. that passed away from Maybe, over yeah. protein consumption mm. and they were looking at protein powders. Yes. And again, you made the argument, well, what about chicken and beef? That needs to be labelled as well too. Yes. Um, and they were talking about, oh, yes, but if there's any chance that anybody could be harmed, it needs to be regulated and mm. there needs to be things put in place. But the, the problem is if that's really true, if it's mm. in banning this and banning that, if that's really true, then cigarettes and alcohol should be banned immediately. Tomorrow. Yeah. And and that that's scary because like, Protein, for example, we, great great point to pick that up because protein is required for the human body. I won't go into details, but many, many things, okay? So it's needed. Food colorings aren't needed by the human body, mm -hmm. yet they're allowed, and yet they're talking about putting warning labels on things the human body needs to survive. 
It's, it, it's, it's a bit back to front, and this is the pr- and this is the problem, I guess, when you legislate in one area. Mm. Um, you know, it affects a broad a broad area, and we're seeing that a lot in Australia with manufacturing, other things as well too. Mm. That yeah, sure. I mean, and it might really benefit in some areas, but generally speaking, unfortunately, it, it can be quite quite poor. It's very poor, and I'll give you kind of give you a really great example of, yeah. of one of the poor ones. Um, uh, red colouring, okay, red number three. Oh, well, and then red colouring, I mean, again, people mm. are thinking of red cordial, they're yep. thinking of red lollies, and what yep. that does to children, make them go hyperactive. Yep, Allura Red is what it's also called. It's approved for use in beverages, bakery goods, desserts, powders, candy, cereal foods, drugs, and cosmetics, and all the rest. So, so, so it's quite, quite thing Now, of course, uh, you know, it's banned in a lot of countries, of course, this red, so it's banned in the UK. Okay. Uh, in the EU, it's banned. Yep. Um, and previously banned in Norway, so this stuff's bad. Why is it bad? It's because it is acknowledged animal carcinogen and likely to cause cancer in doses right. that uh, humans would consume. So all these countries are banned, but Australia allows it. <laughs> There well, you go. For international listeners, at least your governments are doing something right. Yeah. Well, I mean, and you've got to remember that, that this is not like protein where your body needs it. You don't die of a food. Now, I actually... A lack of food colouring. Yeah, lack of food colouring. And do you, know, do you know where else this food colouring is? Uh, well, I wouldn't even call it food colouring because I don't want to link it to food. Sure. But I, I realised we used it in the office here. What? In? A printer? Exactly. <laughs> That's the printing dye. <laughs> And so, what's it made out of, Steve, when you break it down to it? There you go. What, what, just, <laughs> what is it actually made for? Like, how do they make this stuff? <laughs> All these benzene rings. Look at them. <laughs> oh, jeez. So I, I should hang out. There, that's what put, a benzene put that on ring the, looks uh, put like. Put that on the website. Yeah, that's what a benzene ring looks like. You can see a little rings inside. And, and what Steve's talking to at the moment is the people that are watching, obviously, yeah. on, uh, on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what it's made from. So it's a terrible chemical. It's got a horrendous, you know, chemical name. It's certainly not natural. Even if it was natural, it can contain that in unnatural stuff. And legally, you remember this company that called it illegal colouring. It's legal to call it a natural colouring because it's mostly natural. Wow. You know, it's like most of my arms are attached to me, but missing one doesn't matter. So you know, this is the problem. It's approved in drugs. Yeah. In medicines. Right. In, so it's so. It could be conceivable that someone could drink it, eat it at a bakery, like have to have it in some bakery goods, have it as a dessert, uh, uh, put it, eat some lollies with it in it, put it in cereals, in foods, in drugs. So they could be consuming a lot of this stuff. Right. They're, they're common staple things that people consume every day. Uh, so, of course, it's uh, incredibly dangerous. I've got, a, I've got a few others here too if you want to, want to hear this one some more bad news. Um, there, there is another red, a red, red 40, which, of course, is uh, banned in most of the countries. Um, it's banned in UK, EU, um, but it's allowed in Australia. What about the US? No, it's allowed in the US, this one. Okay. Uh, it is the most widely used dye, and it accelerates the appearance of tumours in mice. Wow. Yeah, so what do you think that means? Well, again, Steve, I, I, I guess a lot of people have tumours in dormant states or, yep. or uh, you know, uh, and again, anything that can excite those and cause growth is, is probably not a good thing. So it's, it's, It works like insulin-like growth factor one. So insulin-like growth factor one is like a chemical in the body that fires up tumours. Okay? Yep. It causes growth of muscles and all that. So people are going, well, that's not a good thing. It is in a small amount. You don't want too much of it because it does accelerate the growth of tumours. And right. so does this stuff. Now, IGF-1, you need to grow and put on muscle. You, you don't die of a red 40 deficiency. No. You don't need it. So what, what about, uh, I mean, there was the classic lolly with the blue colour, Steve. Did oh, you... blue. You know, again, I don't yeah, want to mention names no, because I don't want to get myself tangled into a lawsuit with a very large company, but... Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. FDNC blue one... Um, um, it's funny because I looked at a bunch of studies yeah. and there was no evidence of any toxicity. Okay. There was three of them. And I went, this is what, what? And it was all done by the food industry. I was just about to say, who? so you've got to look at, at who it was. Now, obviously, as you say, Steve, yeah. uh, you can deviate from the norm and you can actually yeah. uh, remove you know, subjects out of a study based on your criteria. Yes. Which, again, is it's like... It's like stacking the deck. It's like the foxes watching the fox house, you know, they, I mean they, the hen house. So. And, and then there was a study that came out that showed that it, it works with glutamic acid, which we're going to mention later. Right. Which, which is natural, right? Glutamic natural, acid is naturally occurring. Natural. Yep. So if you add this nat- unnatural substance with this natural substance, you get a, a term of neurotoxicity. Does everyone know what that is? So that's going to cause brain issues, right? Brain so we're issues. talking Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia. All those sorts yep. of things. It's accelerating that. 
So that's one of the blue colours. The other blue colour, of course, is even worse. And what was that? Was uh, that found in the confectionery, Steve? That is yes, it is. Very, it very, very um, pretty blue. I mean, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I used to sort these lollies yeah. out and I'd go yeah. separate the blue, because I'd eat the brown ones first because nobody likes the brown ones. Um, the, 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 the interesting, yeah, the brown ones. The brown ones are a mixture of colours. Are they? Yeah. If, if you mix up all the colours of the rainbow, it turns out brown. So oh. that's how you get brown. So it's probably the worst one. Yeah, it's the worst one. Is it really? Yeah, it is. It is the worst one because even though it's not a colour on its own, yeah. it's a mixture of the primary colours. Oh, wow. Which is yellow, yellow red, red, and blue. So the <laughs> Which of the three, from what you're saying, and my understanding is that those three colours are probably the worst as far as the, the potential carcinogenic impact? Absolutely they are. Wow. So no more brown lollies for me then? No more brown lollies unless it's made from cocoa. Natural, natural. Right. Not real natural. Not, not natural food colouring. Yeah. So anyway, th this one, um, they, they gave this, this thing just 2%, so it's not a huge dose, and it caused gliomas and malignant mammary gland tumours in animals. Wow. So we're talking breast cancer. Breast and brain cancer. Wow. A glioma, uh, by the way, a glioma is a very dangerous type of cancer found in humans. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's made from the glial cells in the body and, and the brain, and the glial cells were once thought to be the cells that stuck the brain together weirdly and they were called glial cells named after the latin name glue wow. so they're the cells that stick the glue together so they're the ones that work to support the neurons mm. so there's lots of them in the body wow. and and glioblastomas and, and all these things are completely pretty much fatal well i mean again for brain function cognitive thought i mean a lot of people are worried now and, and a lot of people looking at and asking us to produce you know neurotropics and other things that actually help with study and mm. focus and mm. you know brain power and that which is cool and i know matt's doing a lot of work in that at the moment but it, by removing some of these bad things out of your, your diet. The other thing as well too, Steve, completely off topic, and I wouldn't mind doing a study on this mm. as well too, and looking at the impact of video games and screen time for uh, children and adults. There's a lot of stuff mm. coming across my newsfeed at the moment talking about the irreparable brain damage that is occurring from too much screen time. Yeah. Um, actually, Simon Sneak, if you want to YouTube it, who I absolutely love, he's a brilliant, brilliant guy. Um, he's got a YouTube video talking about um, the impact of um, you know, neural damage um, from children specifically, but uh, it's not just children. I mean, social media can become a drug as well too, oh, yeah. um, where people are, you know, just concentrating on, um, uh, you know, specifically on these things for too long, which is I, causing I, issues. I was at the gym this morning doing legs, as you do, you know, you're pumping them up, and uh, the person sitting next <laughs> you're really to me was getting ready was, to compete, was, Steve. Yeah, was, yeah was, was sitting on the leg machine as well, just watching her phone. And, well, and I was doing exercise at the gym, which is weird, I know. It's, it's interesting, and again, I'm going to pinch this straight from Simon. And yeah. again, YouTube bit if you if you want to, Simon Sneak, on, um, oh, I forget what it was called, but anyway, and he was saying, and it's so true as well too. I mean, again, I'm a little bit older, Steve, so mm. you're, you're ancient. Um, but what it comes down to is, um, with the older generation so much, is that, yeah, I'll still use my phone. Still I'll check Facebook maybe two, three times a day, which, you know... <laughs> Is not much, right? No, not compared to Whereas some. when a lot of people, and it'll be interesting to see if people will agree with this as well too, with the younger generation, the wise and the millennials, mm. what they'll actually do is they'll, they'll type and they'll have their phone uh, here upright and they'll be typing and they'll be, they'll be doing this. And it's funny, you know, I don't know how many people in the office you actually notice do that. Yeah. The, 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 the bandwidth, the ability to problem solve is dramatically decreased when, you, when you're multitasking like that. Because yes. you're not, you know what I mean? And it's funny, like for me, I like to turn off the phone, I put my music on, I shut the door, mm. I shut out all things. Why and, not? And, and, and well, then I can really focus, especially if I'm, if I'm you know, visioneering, if you want to use that word, or if I'm really trying to solve issues. Mm. I need to remove all distractions. I don't know how people can actually really give deep, thought or function when they're doing anyway that's a conversation for another day steve so <laughs> no it's crazy i mean but, but, but the other danger about being you know screen time and we won't heart lava it but if you're on the screen you're not exercising you're not doing something productive you know if, if you're spending too many hours like kids too many hours on the screen they're not riding their bike they're not catching balls or whatever it is you know they're, they're not doing what what i did when i was growing up which was be active and be yeah. out there in the open so you want to get back to another blue... Well, Steve, uh, I had my Commodore 64. I mean, I'm really showing my age there now. Because the old go. Commodore 64... I remember a Commodore... Atari 20. 2600. Oh, even before that, they were the terrible machines. Kids would look at it. Oh, mind you, they've got Minecraft, so they're kind of getting a taste of it. But um, yeah, I used to spend some time, but it wasn't portable. No. And, and I couldn't sneak it into my room. You know, well, you know, even if it was in the room, you know, I'd load up and, you know, it just, it's a different... Because we cables, right? you know, but, back then. <laughs> now it's all Bluetooth. I remember when I first came across Bluetooth and I said... 
what's what's a Bluetooth? <laughs> yeah, it's no yeah. one. You know, I never was like, well. Oh, I think that was is it Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? that's an Australian invention. One of them. Oh yeah, one of them is. I think it might be Wi-Fi. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so let's get back into, into food. Uh, yeah. So th- this blue dye causes agliomas, and it also increased the risk of astrocytomas. Now I'm going to give you a bit of at home guess there. An astro cell. Guess what shape that is? It's a cell in the in the brain. An astro. An astrocytoma, or that, that, an astrocyte. I don't know, like a star? A star shape. Yeah, right. It's a star-shaped um, cell. If you look at a picture in your anatomy book, it's got a little nucleus, and it's got a star, like, yeah. hand sting it. So it's called an astro cell. That's how they named these things back then. They just went, oh, it looks like a star. Oh, we'll call it astro cell. Huh. So uh, it causes astrocytoma, so brain cancers as well. So, Steve, we can go through probably all the colours, yellow, yep. blue, red, purple, pink yep. whatever right and and there's going to be a lot of food coloring which is um uh, natural and non-natural so tell me about the natural so there's some natural oh, colors yeah. steve that are not good for us as well too i mean i mean not just natural but actual really natural that are not good for us or is it only the ones that are that are well, you know inverted yeah, commas natural there, there is there are natural colors that end up not being good for us and that's a, a classic one is beta carotene now, I guess most people know what beta carotene is. I remember you and Matt talking about uh, when you were working for another company mm. that there was a um, study done with smokers uh, yes. utilizing beta carotene as an antioxidant to yes. offset the um, negative effects of smoking yeah, in terms sounds of like a good idea. arresting the um, free radicals and all the rest yeah. of it. And the results were pretty tragic. It increased uh, lung cancer risk. By how much can you remember? A fair bit. It was like about 20 years ago, this study, and they haven't done a study since, obviously, because you don't want to you know, give people cancer. And it's not that the beta carotene gave them cancer. It's just the fact that the single antioxidant on its own became a free radical, like all um, antioxidants do. And the a, a radical uh, of the carotenoid radical was more dangerous than the radical that it took the electron from. See, I always thought that the antioxidant was supposed to go in and obviously anti the oxidant by by doning a um uh electron electron so that it, one, it yeah. would stabilize no it, it it becomes a free radical itself right and usually it's a less harmful free radical and it shuttles it around to the other other antioxidants in the body yep. and then goes through systems and there are enzymes in the body that can make antioxidants like glutathione is made in the body yep. Yep. that revives vitamin that. c as well too yep. yep absolutely so so these things can eventually be neutralized Very good. Yeah. which is fine because yep. we make free radicals all the time our immune system makes free radicals all the time to kill bacteria for example yep. they're not the enemy but if you just take one single antioxidant on its own, it becomes dangerous. Really? So if, you're, if you've got, say, uh, I'll make this up, say you've got beta carotene as a colouring on um, a, uh, a, I won't mention any names, but on a, a, a chip, for example. Well, a, now, a no, type no, of chip now, I know orange. where you're going with this. So, so this is something that I heard a while ago, mm. and, and I want to get the myth from the fact here as yeah. well too. So there are really popular orange-coloured balls, and also in Australia we've got like re- sort of rings, um, the 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 you don't want to cheat something when you when you're <laughs> talking about cheese flavored yeah cheese flavored right <laughs> and the, and you know you eat them and you end up you know as you see kids and they're licking their fingers because their fingers all go orange you mm. know you know the the types of treats that we're talking about here right I used to eat them I now I heard bag. a rumor Steve that yep. the orange and I think it's wrong right mm. which is again where you've got to get to the truth mm. that the orange was extremely toxic that it was extremely carcinogenic. And I believed and I was told, and again, maybe there's some misinformation here, that it was basically petroleum-based. But th- tell me the truth around the this um, savoury snack. Well, there's different ones and there's different colours. This is the problem. Right. If you use a, a yellow-approved um, you know, dye, you're in trouble. It is carcinogen and it is petroleum-based. These are um, you know, made from petroleum products, unfortunately. Wow. But even take the best-case scenario. Well... Second best case scenario, say it's beta carotene. Right. Then you're having a large dose of a single antioxidant because yeah. there's no other antioxidants in chips, you know what I mean? So yeah. you're going to have that on its own, and that replicates the study. Which that was done 20 increased. years ago, that they yeah. shut down. And it was a significant increase in mortality, oh, it was, wasn't it? It was, it, it, was, yeah. it was terrible. Uh, it was a, and I, you know, I, I, I don't you know, bag them for trying. It's just that it, it showed that you can't take single antioxidants on its own. And that's why we don't take huge dose of vitamin C anymore like we used to. So, so with regards to the flavoring, it's made from, or the coloring, it was made from um, beta... Uh, beta uh, which one? The, the beta carotene. Beta, beta carotene. Yeah, and, some uh, of them are. And right, so not maybe quite as bad as the petrochemical. 
Which is funny to think. No, that probably the- not as bad as, but it's still not good. Right. And that 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 that's not even taking into account all the other refined stuff in there, all the trans fats and all the MSG in there and all the other stuff, which is, you know, so, so it's a, and also if you're eating that food, you're not having fruits and vegetables, are you? Well, it's devoid of virtually all vitamins and minerals. Mm. Um, you're not getting any um, good fats. You're getting trans fats. Actually, Steve, just quickly, trans fats. What, yeah. t- T- tell me about trans fats, which sure. are typically found a lot in packets of chips and stuff like that i, I know processed. that um, yeah processed foods they're not found in nature so the body freaks out when it comes across them right and trans fat is uh when you've got um different molecules coming out one side of the molecule and uh, another molecule coming out the other side so it's translocated to each other chemically that's the chemical thing basically it means very bad things happen in your body your body can't deal with it it causes heart disease it increased the risk of cancer so you you don't want to have any trans fats in your diet whatsoever they're not good in moderation they're bad in so in so this is well understood and well understood and even, even the dietitians even will agree dietitians and, yep. and, and We're all even the, um, the the mainstream doctors and all the rest so how come it's not banned oh well it's uh it's like smoking <laughs> yeah right that's a cl- if you take that product as directed you will probably get cancer and die the smoking i mean if you smoked you know, like say I'm 20 and I illegally light up a cigarette and smoke for 50 years, chances are by 70 I'll be dead or dying of cancer. Right. That, that's statistics. You have a greater chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even a greater chance. You're over 50% chance of being dying. If you smoke for 50 years... See, so, and I know that there are other contributing factors. Just yeah. people's natural... I mean, you see the people that are five and they smoke to the 105 and smoke a pack a day yeah. and they're fine, right? Yeah. They, they must have an unbelievable resilience, you mm. know, uh, which means they're probably superhuman anyway. The problem with that, and see, Steve, I, I believe in people's right to express themselves yeah. in any which way they want, which is taking poisons, which is taking stuff that's bad for you. Like, I don't want to ban alcohol. I don't want to ban cigarettes. No. The only time I get upset with the cigarette smokers is when I'm inhaling their smoke oh, yeah. passively Passive because smoking. that's not my choice. If, yeah. they, if people want to smoke, fine. But when I smoke, when I breathe in their smoke, it's like if someone goes out and drinks, mm. it's not going to impact me unless they're a drunk driver. Correct. Then it's going to impact me, right? Correct. But but you know, if people want to take drugs or do, if, let people do what they want. But it's when it impacts on someone else that's when I get exactly. upset. Exactly. And and smoking has a, a terrible effect on the body by knocking out a thing called p fifty three. Right. And p fifty three is a gene expression protein that causes the cell cycle, the cell replication, to become more regulated and slow down. So if you knock out that particular uh, protein, then the cell just divides and you can get cancer from it. So it, because it doesn't slow it down, it accelerates it? Yeah, it's like Which photocopying is... things really, really fast. You're in a rush, you'll typically make a mistake. Right. And that's what happens when your genes replicate too fast. They make a mistake. And if the gene is wrong, the cell usually dies. But and this again cancer. talks about aging. I mean, again, yeah. Steve, we look at things holistically. This is where I like fasting because yes. fasting slows, slows down, down that process. And it's like you get a better copy. You're able to get rid of the, the um, broken DNA. Mm. Um, so again, anything that speeds it up. Steroids. Um, growth, Steroids. Uh, growth hormone that Insulin a lot of guys like use. Factor, uh, IGF-1. Insulin. Uh, yeah, and a lot of bodybuilders and, and yeah. athletes will use this to obviously help replicate their muscles. The Very downside right. of that is also any tumors mm. or any other broken strands of DNA are also getting replicated. Eating regularly as well too, Steve, also speeds up that process, which again can be beneficial for upregulating your metabolism, Mm. but that's not always a good thing, Uh, especially in terms of you're looking at longevity. Sure, you might have big muscles um, and sure, you might get leaner as well too, Mm. um, but this is where this... um, Everything in moderation, Mm. you know? That's right. And, And in animal studies, the only sort of thing you can extend people's lives with in all the animal studies, even up to monkeys, is by putting them on a slightly reduced calorie diet. Mm. Uh, and that includes fasting, those sorts of things, because it slows down their aging rate. We know this happens from flies to monkeys. And again, we, we talk about the episode, and for people freaking out who are eating these regular meals and all the rest yeah. of it, going, no, I must do that because I must build the perfect Bulk body. Up. The cool thing is is that Dr. Sashin Panda showed that there was a significant natural increase in, in uh, the body's own growth hormone, yeah. um, uh, by doing the fasting. Yep. So you're actually getting the benefits of both what you, better skin, better hair, better nails, good physique, you yeah. know, l- leaning up body, mus- you know, uh, lean muscle tissue. So a lot of people freak out and go, unless I'm eating every three hours, I'm losing muscle. Mm. Uh, actually, you know, nah, you, can, you, you, can, you can counteract that. So You can. And, and also the bacteria in the gut counteract that. Um, there's a bacteria in the, in the gut called uh, methanobrevibacter which increases if you're doing a lot of fasting and those sorts of things. And that simply 
will enable you to be more efficient with your digestion and take more calories out of food. So it's, mm. a, it's a nice adaptive response. And this is what happens when... So you can get more calories out of the food. So in other words, you're, you're, you're being more efficient. So yes. you, you put in 100 grams of meat, you might get 100 grams of usage. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah I know As opposed mean. to if you're scarfing stuff down all the time every three hours, your body like, becomes lazy. Um, and it might only use 60% or 70%. Exactly. And this is what happens when a lot of people go on these, uh, like they do severe calorie restriction for too long, too harsh. VLCDs. Yep. yep. They, they go for a comp and that sort of thing. And, and these bacteria grow in their gut. And of course, then when they eat, quote, normal food, they get fat and they go, and we, we get these, yeah, these rebound, all yeah. the time. And, yep. and it's called, they used, what do they call it? Metabolic damage, all these sorts of things. Yep. It's not metabolic damage. It's just the, the, the gut just changes. And, and, and the nice thing is, again, kids. a lot of really good coaches and this this is why if you're yeah. doing any of these comps or you're looking to, to do anything like that, um, they do reverse dieting now, which yes. means that they, it, it, again, it's it's like almost like the bends. You don't dive down and then come straight back up That's again, exact, which is what almost good everybody analogy. does, right? Yeah. And instead, you've got to actually slowly get your way back up to the surface. So you can't restrict, restrict, restrict. Oh, great. Now it's Ben and Jerry's and pizza for the next three weeks. You're going to kill yourself. Um, anyway. But that's what happens. Uh, we're getting off topic. Oh, yeah. So, Steve, in terms yeah. of colors... Um, mm. Anything else you want to talk about with oh, regards to that? The, the scary thing about colours is that they do no good for the body. This is this is the classic thing. It's not like, oh, well, if you eat more protein, you put on more muscle, that's all right. But these colours do absolutely no good. Um, but there is good news and bad news. They did invent a new red. You know how the other reds are really bad? And they named it a really cool uh, name. They called it Citrus Red number two citrus like red orange is it like it sounds like that doesn't it yeah but it's totally synthetic and it increases bladder cancer oh and the fda uh, expert came out and said and i quote this color should not be used as a food additive wow <laughs> so where is it approved to be used oh in australia <laughs> well the fda has no jurisdiction here is that we, no. we don't have to listen to them the, the, the how FDA, do these things get through like i mean in terms of me and uh, look i'm not having a crack at the tga yeah. here but i mean the tga are obviously there mm. where there is black and white evidence especially from industries yes. that they respect like the fda which is yeah. well known institute um they would if they had given it a grass status yes. fine but they haven't they've no. gone no nah. and, and one of the guys has come out but then australia goes yes but yeah, then other really cool stuff mm. that we should be able to have, mm. um, you know, like selenium and other things at a certain level. It's like it's, it's crazy. A study comes out proving that a certain amount of selenium is beneficial against cancer. Yes, right. You're not allowed to it. <laughs> you know, it's 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 totally crazy. I and, don't get and, it. And the worst part, I, like, I, I, you know what, Steve? We need to bring in, um, you know, somebody from the TGA, maybe ex TGA or something like that. They can, and, and I mean, there's not enough in a hatchet sort of an interview because mm. of course Steve we're natural based and we mm. want to and I'm a libertarian if you like mm. I believe that people have yep. the right to do whatever they want yep. whether it's good or bad for themselves yeah. um, you know the right to choose is, is 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 the thing you know like you know Voltaire said you know I love that saying I love it so much you know I, I might not agree with what you say but I'll fight to, to the death yes. to allow you to say what say you it. want you know True. we need that freedom I, I just want to understand how, how it is that things in black and white are carcinogenic causing cancer but banned yet, in the EU banned in the UK but and, and, and you know and I'm sure this is not just in Australia there'll be other pockets in the US and stuff where things have been clearly demonstrated and shown black and white peer reviewed you know uh, but yet they seem to get rubber stamped by somebody who just refuses to or ah. either doesn't acknowledge, doesn't see or I don't know. Oh, it's a little bit scary because with colours, it's a little bit different to say, and I'll pick on aspartame a little bit here. I'll be a little bit of a dig, but not. aspartame at least does one good thing. So this thing. is the sweetener? Yeah, sweetener, aspartame. It sweetens things, okay? Sure. And it's low calorie. Let, let's just say that it's got those minuscule benefits. I know it's got a horrendous uh, side story, but there's at least... But putting making a product more red... What does that do? Well, strange, Stephen. I'll play devil's advocate here for a while. Mm. There was, um, we were looking at bringing out some some pre workouts a while ago. In fact, we bought one out, and we were toying with the idea of having no coloring in them whatsoever. Mm. The market perception on that was really poor. Mm. In fact, there used to be a range of drinks that had different flavors, and you know there was no color to it. They mm. failed. Mm. Um, the funny thing is, is that color is extremely important where it comes to perception of taste. Absolutely, and uh, therefore, and that's, and that's why. But I appreciate what you're saying as far as you know, for the human body, mm. taste 
adds something that is discernible, mm. whereas color, if you close your eyes, it's not discernible. But the color, the ability to view that actually has a big impact on, on taste itself. And, and that's fine. So so what we should be doing is doing what I did when I when I formulated a red product many years ago was I used beetroot juice, sure. concentrate, because that had a better beneficial effect on the muscles. Okay, we'll, as well. take infrared, for example. That contains red berries yep. and beetroot. We can't bring that out in a lemon lime flavor because, <laughs> because people are just going to... Well, we could, but people would go, what the heck? Well, because there are, you, you've there got are a, green colors. Sure, but but we've got beetroot in there and shisandra berry. So like, there's no way that we can over... You can't, you know what I mean? So yeah. so the thing is, is that we try to be as natural as possible mm. with all of our stuff, um, which means that we're not going to obviously throw weird colors and stuff so, so what about green number three uh this actually causes testicle cancer wow cancer of the light cells which, which are in the testes so just just to throw that one in there just a bit of a giggle so i mean and these these tests are all done in 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 rats and people go well what about humans and it's kind of like you don't want to do an experiment on humans that shows it causes cancers in rats because people say yeah but that's in a rat testicle you know what then do you know what i'd say (laughs) i'd say all of you that are skeptical and not sure are you saying well yeah that's right okay well you line up for a study and we'll give you the green (laughs) coloring go for it and then and you know what a hundred percent of those people would say yeah no thanks no it's it's absolutely so therefore if you're in doubt you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. There, there are serious natural colours, not not the natural, but you know, like the ones we use. And and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not blowing smoke up our own butts, and especially Matt and yours who, who formulated Thanks, Steve. these uh, things. No, no, but, we've but, got John for that. Yeah. <laughs> but but there are colours, and and um, you know, and, and they've got really classic names that make it sound. Can I give you the best name of a colour yeah, I found? Yeah. It's called brilliant black. Right. Brilliant, brilliant black, black colour. It's now banned in the USA, Canada, and Japan, and previously banned in Norway. It's fine in Australia. And Norway again now. Yeah, Norway. Yeah, so so it's but banned so in lots of color yeah. countries. What does that do to you? Oh, it, it's a carcinogen. Okay, nice. Yeah, so is uh, the brown color. But that's banned in those same countries again. So even Japan have banned them, Canada, uh, USA. So it's it's pretty bad, you know. So, Steve, for manufacturers out there that, that yeah. sort of are looking at this, there are natural alternatives that you yes. can move towards. The, the difficulty with that, Steve, is pr- pretty much they're more uh, expensive and they're probably not quite as consistent. And stable. I mean, there, there is – I mean, you know, you know the medicines. The, yep. These colors are found in medicines because if someone picks up a medicine, you can identify yes, it. Yes, I understand that. Like the little blue pill. The Viagra. little blue pill. Of course. Viagra pill. Yep. Yeah, that's the – PDE5 inhibitor and and that pill is got its classic blue and you know if you're just going to take pills like that once in a blue moon you'll be fine but if you're eating a food that could be the size of that yeah with coloring Uh all the way through it like Uh a cereal which Mm -hmm. you could um then you know you have ice cream with that with propylene glycol in it you're in trouble i mean this stuff adds up yeah sure does it's it's bad i mean if it's got an artificial color to it it's, it's usually not a natural food yeah there's no artificial colors in apples Steve, outside of colouring, yes. What is there anything else? Is there anything else you want to finish off with colouring before we move on to the next topic? No, that that that's colouring. Just it's it's scary stuff. It, it really is. is. Even the quote natural colours aren't natural. Natural ain't natural anymore. They're not. You know, not it's like the girl I used to date. They're not natural. <laughs> Prove it. We've oh. done a podcast on unnatural uh, breasts, which was which was very informative. Oh, we had some great feedback actually from. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure we're going to get assassinated because we had um, one guy, a, a girl, write in and uh, she said after listening to Sambo Patrick talk about her experience and her journey with regards to her breast implants, mm. I forget which, which episode it is, um, it was yeah. only a few back, but anyway, um, and she talked about the, the impact that it had on her health mm. and not everybody experiences this, but for some people it becomes a real problem. And she was effectively suffering with a form of toxicity that came from the plastic, the breast implants that she Asia had. So she had, she had, she had the, the quite courageous decision to have them removed, mm. um, which I really appreciate because, I mean, I understand that in terms of a woman's shape, it's, it's, it's about after children especially, but even if you're you know, perhaps a little less endowed in that area, the way that your clothes fit you, the confidence that it brings you, women want to feel womanly you know mm. so i get it yeah. I, it's 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 emotional it's not just aesthetics as a lot of people may think or especially males mm. um anyway so she decided to have them removed a, a woman listening to the the podcast uh really identified with a lot of the symptoms that sam was having and made a decision very quickly to have hers removed 
which effectively was done only a few weeks, I believe, before her honeymoon. <laughs> her partner obviously was not particularly happy because not only did she remove them, and again, that's I'm not yep great, you know, and that's fine. Yep. I mean, and again, you marry a person because you love them, mm-hmm. um, but. So that that's enough of a blow for him, expecting a, yes. a wedding, you know. But also, she used all the money that they were going to use for their honeymoon to actually have the surgery. <laughs> so and, and double a, double whammy. So he missed yeah. out on the you know the breast, and he missed out on the honeymoon. Yep, that's just uh, that that's a that's a horror story, isn't it? Well, <laughs> no, yeah, and you no, know the funny thing is, Steve, when you put it into perspective, what a horror story is is that if if if. If you end up with cancer, if you end yeah. up with a with a with an illness, with lymphoma, with something, and mm. again, I, again, I, I'm not an expert there, and I even said that to Sam. Sam had done a lot of, of of study there, but obviously, this woman identified with what Sam had said, um, and I just, you know, obviously, life's hard at times, and there's some decisions oh. that you have to make that aren't always easy. But interesting bit of feedback on that. It's it's you know, in all seriousness, I, I think she made the right call. I mean, of course it's, she it's did. It's not just a two week holiday to wherever they were going. Well, but it's a lifetime. I, I haven't actually had the follow up yet, um, but I believe even in the email, she said she started feeling better almost immediately once they'd been co- once they'd come out. So you know, again, actually, we should follow up on that, Steve, and find out if her all of her symptoms have disappeared because that would be, again, anecdotal, but. But interesting. Well, so. Sam Sam talked to quite candidly about her uh, her back. You know, the fact that she's carrying around things here twenty four seven. Yep. I mean, that's that's an extra weight, mm-hmm. and that that that's that's serious enough. Even yep. if even if they didn't react or anything, it's the the weight of the the woman being you know pulled forward basically all I the time. Well, Steve, I, that's why I have to go to see the chiropractor every single week because my hips are constantly out. You know, it's it's a, it's a lot of weight. <laughs> so you know, I understand. I appreciate. Unfortunately, that wasn't surgery. That was um, just a lot of socks. No, um, but, but anyway. So, so Steve, anything else on on food coloring? No, that's it for coloring. We could go on forever. But I'll, is there I'll anything put it else away. that you want to talk about with regards to food by numbers? Well, yeah, there is. There's another number called six two one. It's in all the foods. That's the flavour enhancer, isn't it? MSG, monosodium yeah. glutamate. A new paper came out on that, uh, uh, showing this so, was published Steve, uh, this year. Uh, when I was very young, probably back in the 90s, my mum was following the bloody Pritikin diet and all no, that yeah. rubbish, right? You know, Nathan Pritikin? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember there was – this is not new news. A lot of people know about MSG. Mm. Um, a lot of people know about um, Flavor Enhancer 621. Yes. Especially um, there was a huge uproar at the time about it being overused in Chinese food. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, MSG is an interesting one because you add it to food and it makes it taste great. Yes, uh, it does. That's that's kind of because it. it excites the nerves, correct? It excites the nerves because there's in, in MSG monosodium glutamate. There's glutamate, mm-hmm. and you have glutamate receptors in your head, and of course, sodium you might know is salt. So you get this double whammy of flavour, which is great. You add it to food, and it enhances the flavour of the food. This is the good side. Yeah. The bad side is, of course, with health. If you've got this added stuff to your diet, because MSG is found naturally in the body, but if yes. you add it more and more, like you have it in soy sauce and go to Chinese food and all this sort of stuff then it causes uh, glutamate toxicity in the brain. It can lead diseases such as Alzheimer's, brain tumors, schizophrenia, dementia, anxiety, Tourette syndrome, uh, Huntington's disease, terrible disease, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and epilepsy. And this is published in a new paper this year, which showed that MSG can lead to these sorts of things. And also it causes uh, inflammation in the body and increase, um, increased leptin resistance, which can lead to obesity. Wow. So... Uh, you know, even if you're trying to, you don't care about your brain, Yeah, you may care about your figure. Yep. And so either way, you're in trouble. And also it causes reproductive um, abnormalities too. Wow. That was the three but things from the new study came at, out. At what sort of toxins, at what sort of input amount, Stephen? And that's the thing, because a lot of people say, yeah, but surely a bit from time to time is not going to hurt you. And a bit from time to time is totally fine. Sure. This is a dose-dependent agent. This right. is an intolerance, not an allergy. Yes. So you can certainly have it. It's the amount that builds up in your body. So if you're having a lot of, you know, quick noodles or you're having these bags of chips and you're oh having... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I know. That's my problem. When I, when I was, uh, you know, young and yeah. stupid and, and all my mates were going to uni, but I was too dumb for that so mm. i was working at um at Maya in the sporting department yeah. and I, I was a loser when i was younger you have no idea steve all, all, all i'd live for is to get to get drunk yeah. uh, thursday friday saturday night i you know what i, I used to save up my money right from the doll mm. <laughs> to 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 so i could spend money on alcohol do you know what i used to live on what was that two minute noodles two minute noodles yeah i, I kid see. you not and actually i got really sick and ended up in hospital for nearly three weeks and nearly died and that's where I had the epiphany. Oh. Oh, uh, not just that. Yeah. 
lots of alcohol, yeah. really poor nutrition. Mm. Um, because when I was younger, I was, I was quite a good athlete mm. and I dislocated my knee really badly. Mm. And I, that was it. My parents then moved back to New Zealand when I was um, 18 mm-hmm. and I just went off the rails yeah. and just lived life to drink and be stupid. I was, real, I was an asshole. I really mm. was. I was, a re- I was not a nice guy at all. And um, yeah, nearly died. We ended up, we ended up in hospital for... Um, in and out basically for three weeks. Um, wow. Got um, complications from the surgery as well too. Mm. Uh, end up getting um, an infection, um, septicemia. Ooh, uh, had to go back. Infection. Yeah, had to go back in and again, and uh, with massive um, antibiotics. Mate, seriously, it was it was horrible, and uh, and that's when I had the epiphany. You know, I've got one body. I nearly died. I mm. actually thought I was going to die, mm. and um, that's when I just decided to change my my life around. But, um, mate. Two minute noodles is all that I ate, and this is the funny thing because there are other people out there that might be listening to this podcast, or maybe if you've got sons and daughters that are a bit younger and they're not mm. looking after themselves, they probably mm. need to hear this as well too. Yeah. That's all I was pretty much well eating was food that was high in MSG, high in those little um, flavor enhancing yeah. satchels, you know, which is you know lots of stocks and stuff like that. Well, they're high in MSG yeah. because you've got to remember you've got this little packet of flavor that's got a flavor a big bowl of noodles. Mm. It's got to be it's got a lot, it's loaded with MSG because that that is a great flavor enhancer. Yeah, and you know, you got to remember that, that this is also found in in nature. You may go out for a Chinese meal. You may go, you know, it, it comes from everywhere. This stuff, and yeah. also glutamate is also found in protein powders. Yes, yeah, uh, glutamine and glutamic acid are uh, synonymous with they each convert, other. They convert, don't they? they? It's convert. about a four to one ratio. So yeah. for every four grams of um, glutamic acid, that can convert to a gram of glutamine. Yeah. So, so, you know, you could be eating, quote, even a healthy diet and you're getting a lot of this glutamic acid, which causes neurotoxicity and means you can have sleeping problems and all sorts of things at best. The worst is this, this case scenario, which is My terrible neurological disease. I don't know the answer to this, Steve, and yeah. I don't know if you can answer this or not. With glutamic acid that's found in protein powders, for an example, is there an off switch in the tyrosine or in the serine or any, any of the other amino acids that actually help to regulate it? There is. It's in. It had, had to be right. Glycine and glycine it, is it? It, it forms a, an agent called GABA. Right. Which I've seen spelt like the GABA in Brisbane, but it's GABA amino butyric acid G A B A. Yeah, which is great for um, helping with sleep. Yep. I know a lot of people take it at night to help with growth hormone production as yep. well too. Yeah, it, it's the switch off uh, substance. Uh, very, very good for your brain. Excellent for neurotoxicity. Yep. And banned in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute, but at least you can get some red food dying. You, you, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, but you know, I, I mean, I used to get this stuff from America um, because you can buy it as a powder God in America. God bless America, by the way. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's just a little bit more thing. To, uh, hopefully that ban's going to be overturned because I know there was a lot of people trying to overturn it to help save their brains. You know, and it was, you know, we, we used to get it in, you know, we just order it in, look, look like cocaine. It's white powder. It's dodgy looking. So there's a lot of things that look like cocaine, yeah, Steve, know, that aren't I cocaine. I know. That's not the reason. Yeah, but but it was but yeah, but that, that that is one of those things that, that you just worry about. You think, well, why is that banned? You know, if red dye is do allowed. you know what they need to do? They need to put someone's name to the bill that effectively put it through, and then you need to go back and be able to ask these people why. An email with to it too or something, so you just bomb yeah, with emails. But the problem is though, they won't get back to you. No. I mean, if they haven't got a, a, a reason to justify... I'd say I, I still... Again, Steve, I just go to conspiracy theories all the time. Well, They've been paid off, lobbied. No. or I don't know. I mean, there might be actual genuine reasons. I mean, again, I meet pig-headed people all the time who believe that their way is true, and they probably just say the same thing about me, and that's fine. But um, you know, if you can't justify your reason, um, then yeah. you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to pass laws based on that. Anyway, I digress. Yeah, I know. Absolutely incredible. MSG also had another side effect in its, its ability to induce apoptosis in the cells of the immune system. What that means is it kills death. immune cells. Cell, cell death, yeah. Of your immune system. Yeah. So it's not real good for, you know, your immune system. So, okay, MSG. Go on, tell me the rest of the side effects and then we can go through the foods that typically are found yep. with MSG. MSG uh, is also when you combine it with a high sucrose diet. So let's say you're a kid and you're having sugars with MSG, that's a great way to induce type 2 diabetes. High sucrose. Sorry, I thought you said citrus. Oh, no, uh, sucrose. Uh, citrus. I should say sugar. sucrose. Okay. High sugar diet. Yep. So high sugar diet's bad. MSG is yep. bad. Combined, they're horrendous. Are there any foods that they are found together in, Steve, that you oh, can think of? Oh, loads of them. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, you, like, like your noodles, for example. Those yeah. noodles break down to sucrose and then glucose. Of course. So, so it's but, and, and this is the thing. Again, you look at the panel and you say, oh, well, it's low in sugars. But actually, because it's a simple carbohydrate, it breaks down into a, a sugar molecule. Oh, quite carbohydrates and it's sugar, except unless they're a fiber. Mm. So, you know, very, very scary stuff. I mean, the stuff that we do to food to enhance the flavors and to, to, to increase shelf life is horrendous. 
Uh, quickly, uh, what about ammonia washing in meat? Did you know that meat is uh, bathed yeah, in ammonia? Yeah, we, we were talking about that. Actually, it's funny. It just reminds yeah. me of that scripture that says the power of life and death is in the tongue. Maybe it's not so much in what you speak, but also what you put in your mouth. <laughs> That's a new new twist on scripture, isn't it? Anyway, yeah. So in terms of um, the great film called Food Inc., and if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend that you go and watch this documentary. Um, one of the things that they were talking about is food processing, and it's really funny because I was talking to a, um, one of the, the the guys in the U.S. that's working for us at the moment, and he's effectively gone vegetarian because he's seen a whole heap of stuff at the moment. Mm. And I, I really respect the vegans for their stance where it comes to the animal cruelty as well too. And I think a lot of us turn a blind eye to mm. it. But mm. food processing is something as well too, Steve, that we need to look at. I, I, I eat meat. I, I believe it's 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 good for you and it's part of your diet. I do agree though that I'm not really happy with a lot of the practices that I see around that sort of stuff. Mm. And we need to, and this is where I eat like fresh and local, local butchers that actually, you know, have good practices because a lot of these ships that Australia is getting in trouble mm. with was mm. shipping over, you know, um, oh, life, ca- yeah, li- livestock and all the rest yeah. of it. I mean, uh, my son came mm. home pretty traumatized from that. And that, I, I agree, that's horrible. Yeah. Uh, and we need to do better. Um, you know, cattle crying and all the rest of it, you know, literally, you know, anyway. Mm. So, stuff. so in terms, Steve, of um, uh, bathing the meat, this was shown in, in, in I think it was Food Inc., where uh, a popular chain was actually washing their meat with ammonia to stop mm. the degradation of the food. Yeah. So ammonia is bleach, effectively what you'd use at home. You know, this is not something you're going to take, you know, yeah, I'm going to have a couple of capfuls of bleach to, <laughs> to clean out my insides. <laughs> It's actually quite weird because because ammonia, the body can effectively deal with ammonia because the breakdown of amino acids. So this is the theory of why it's safe. Sure. But there's a terrible side effect that's appeared now. You know, you know when they think it's a good idea at the time, like bringing in cane toads to in Australia, they introduced this terrible For- type of frog. That um, toad. eats yeah, yeah. toad that eats these beetle things. Yep. It was a great idea at the time. But eat everything but. Terrible disaster. Well, let's assume now. I'm going to make a big assumption here that the ammonia thing is. Let's say it's not dangerous for the human body let's just assume okay. for one second just okay that no, no i'm with you there's a mega problem that that's uh, that's come out of that it's because these bugs that are surviving the ammonia treatment and they're super Mutating. bugs yeah and are mutated Look. and and the bad ones are listrid- listridia infections oh. it's terrible because they become antibiotic resistant so <clears throat> what's happening with a lot of uh, companies to prolong the shelf life of their meats they're washing it in ammonia yep. we're consuming that that's going in and completely Completely disrupting the natural um, microbiome of your gut, yep. uh, and it's creating—it's killing off some of them, and it's creating monsters out of the others. Look, the Rinse. funny thing is, as we've said with with Roundup as well too, and pigweed. And if you want to quickly Google this, you'll see that there are large track li- tracks of land in the U.S. that are becoming unfarmable because of mutant weeds that are resistant to pretty much well everything. Mm. Uh, one is called pigweed, and this is the problem when we try and um, think that we can outsmart nature Hmm. nature will always fight back and i think most people recognize that you can only hold back the tide for so long before the tide it's like holding the pendulum to to one side once you let it go because you can't hold on to it forever it goes so far to the other way to outbalance itself you know i think a lot of people are are looking at that whether they're you know greenies and saying the earth is fighting back and going to kill us off or what Hmm. i mean i don't maybe believe quite that extreme but you know what i mean like typically there's always a consequence especially when you disrupt nature in the yeah. way that it should operate and, and this is not my conspiracy theory this is published in the medical literature so so you know even if you assume that oh you know you're right in it's mean ammonia is not bad for you know you can consume small amounts of it it's causing antibiotic resistance and those bugs will kill you yeah which they do like listridia is is terrible for people with um you know you're pregnant for example and it can cause terrible uh, very serious complications and death particularly in the elderly see and again steve this is where i love it's nature scary. and obviously and again without product flogging but things like resilience which are all natural ingredients which go in and just outsmart these little bastards i mean again i believe that the cure is in nature yes as you know the cause may be in nature i think matt was saying to me one time he says he loves nature because wherever you find like poison ivy Mm. or you know a lot of these other nettles and plants that can sting you and hurt you there's there's a remedy normally found within only a few meters of that plant as well too have you heard that before Steve? yeah absolutely and and in the human body we, we our human body can adapt and and matt went through this at the last podcast you weren't you weren't here but, but you get these things called antigen presenting cells and they take in a 
uh, mutant virus. Yep. They show the other immune system what, what things... No, no, attack. I was here for that one. They, they, oh, yeah. they, they go, here you go. Yep. This is the baddie. This is the baddie. So and the immune system can adapt to that. Vancomycin can't adapt. It's no. a molecule that just sits there and does that whatever it does. It's a powerful antibiotic for those who don't know. So, you But can, even now, we're starting to find strains that are resistant to that. And again, because we're not working with the body, VRE. we're just going, right, we're just putting in a nuclear bomb. Yeah. Vancomycin uh, resistant enterobes. And, and Dr. Doug, who's been on the podcast before, talks about the routine prescription of vancomycin after surgery. So every man and his dog gets but, it to prevent an infection. And, and again, looking at a lot of the food, food mm. ain't food anymore, and Franca food and all the rest of it, the problem is, is that you go, right, I'm going to be really wise now with you know, how many antibiotics I use and all the rest mm. of it. It's not enough. Uh, the tipping point is coming because the amount of um, antibiotics that are being used into cattle, into mm. into pigs, into e- e- the overuse is ridiculous. Not only that, it's now being used in plants. And the amount that are being used in plants and in livestock far, far outseeds what we are being uh, taken as individuals. And, you know, again, you just shake your head when you know that doctors are giving it for um, viral infections and things like that. And, and it has been done routinely. Like, yeah. it's just... And so what's, what I am saying with regards to this, and again, now I really sound like a conspiracy theorist, is that we are going to see ridiculous disease outbreaks. Mm-hmm. We are going to see things that are resistant to everything that Western medicine can throw to it, and they already know about it. And it's funny because I used, I saw this years ago when they were talking about the overuse of antibiotics and mm-hmm. how you know we're not as smart as we thought we were, which humans, we never bloody are. We always mm-hmm. repeat, you know, finding ourselves, killing ourselves some way or another. Um Nature is the answer. It is. And, and in hospitals, you find the worst uh, infections because, of course, uh, that's where you use the most antibiotics. Of course. Um, I mean, I, 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 I hate going into hospitals. I, I mm. will rev- avoid them like the plague because I don't want to pick up some flesh-eating virus. Um, but the thing is, though, is that um, the colloidal silver, you look at what that can do. And, and that's what they used in Bali with all the dead bodies to preserve the cadavers mm. because they didn't have enough refrigerators. Um, you, you look at um, wormwood. You, you mm. look at, um, you know, so many powerful, uh, you know, antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial mm. compounds which are found in nature, mm. which, again, for thousands of years, we used to use these things. Now, I'm not saying that all advancement in modern medicine isn't as good. Of course it is. There's some unbelievable things mm. like... Penicillin, yeah, that's <laughs> and what's that derived from? Well, that's a mouldy bread, wasn't it? Yeah. In 1923, Fleming yep. came and, up with that. And and there's and, and don't get me wrong, but w- there needs to be a concept. We need to use science and nature together mm. and and get the most out most out of it. Not just synthetics and not just going right, but if we can combine, you know, the wisdom of of Western medicine with the the understanding of nature and combine those two things, where it's not just about profit, but mm. genuinely about you know taking you know us forward, we, we, we're we're going to do it exceedingly well. We naturopaths work a little bit different i sound like a bit of a wanky naturopath here but but nature um natural substances work with the human body they they take echinacea or something whatever it is uh you go into the body it boosts the immune system and that fights the virus what what drugs do is they are antiviral on its own they just attack viruses or bacteria depending on what drug it is and so you know it 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 has a shelf life our immune system can adapt and change and evolve and and really target whatever's coming into your body not just a standard chemical drug well the thing is i always say as well too i'd rather have a strong immune system that is powerful and strong that's actually you know like anything it's had to resist it's like anything you want to work a muscle you actually it it needs to i hate to say it but sickness is a part of life right and and that old saying whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger well that's there's actually a bit of there's a bit of truth in that though steve in terms of when i was when i was doing legs when I wasn't being chatted up by all the girls at the gym this morning, you know, I was doing <laughs> legs and <laughs> right, eh, Steve. But, you know, it was it was tough. I was straining under the weight, and um, you know what? It's uh, it, it made me stronger. Yep. So as that, opposed to what you could do, though, is you could actually get someone to come and do your leg press for you. I mean, is that going to exactly. benefit you? <laughs> No, yeah, that would have been <laughs> Well, you've easier. lifted the weight, you can mark it off. But And again, this is the, the overuse of antibiotics and overuse of, of a lot of prescription medication. And they're routinely given. All right, we've we yeah. sort of kind of trotted all over oh, the no. place on this. It's cool. kind of one of those wandering conversations, but it's always good having a chat. It's funny, yeah, though, because it's, like it's kind it. of like when we chat about something anyway. We normally wander off topic. Well, this um, is our interest, not just job you know what i mean so it's it's good but um i know that talking to matt because he's not here today he said with the glutamates as well too definitely type in the um uh, the the podcast on ep- uh, glutamates at episode 92 behaving badly in episode 37 on glutamates which specifically is with msg oh, and good. it will cover off on a lot of these side effects mm. but you know everything from people with um 
uh, these sorts of symptoms can be a sign of, of too much glutamate, whether it be natural or MSG, you know, hidden in, in your foods. Uh, headaches, migraines, wheezing, and asthma. I know asthma was a really big one with MSG. It can mm. be quite bad. Very bad. Um, bad behavior, hyperactivity, attention to uh, deficit. The colors um, do that too. Right. Yeah, it's showing. Uh, the, the only problem is with that colors is that it happens in some kids and not others. So, you know, you might be talking to um, another father and they go, oh, when my cat ha- kid has this red stuff, he goes up his tree. And then the other father goes, no, that's, that's useless. That, that's not true because my kid doesn't. So yes. it's very individual. So yes. it does occur though. And again, it just comes down to the way that your your body reacts, yeah, how you're wired, as yeah. they say. So exactly. uh, insomnia, restlessness, anxiety, irritability, aggression, chest pain, mm. abnormal heart rhythm, palpitations, rapid heartbeat, flushing and rash skin. That used to happen to me when I used to have this um, non-alcoholic wine when I was younger. I'd have it and immediately I'd get uh, itching on my chest. It was really weird. I think it was obviously uh, just a significant increase in, in glutamates. Glutamates, yeah. Uh, sweating, sense of facial pressure and swelling. Um, yeah, so there's a whole heap of side effects there. So mm. that could certainly be uh, an interesting side effect of having too many glutamates. And certainly hydrolyzed proteins contain them, MSG contains them, yeast extracts, so such things as Vegemite and Promite. Mm. Soya sauce is a huge, um, you know, uh, one for glutamates. Mm. We do talk a lot about glutamates, but Matt believes that there is a significant undiagnosed issue with people suffering from a lot of the side effects that they have not found. So that's why we always mm. like to take a couple of minutes just to remind people that you may be consuming things in your diet, which is adding to you these issues and these symptoms that you're feeling. Mm. Uh, tomato sauce, stock cubes, chicken salt, celery salt, you know, all those sorts of salts and gravies, uh, walnuts, peanuts, mushrooms, corn, broccoli, spinach, uh, vintage uh, cheeses, so hard and strong things like that. Um, oysters, anchovies, and lots of vegetarian meat alternatives. So, mm. again, just because you're not eating meat, Palm not necessarily. Palmson's really high in glutamate. Yeah, I've heard that. Anyway, Steve, I, we've, we've pretty much will run out of time. We've covered, mm. we've covered a lot of ground. Is there anything you want to finish off with? No, I just think you've, you've got to eat as natural as possible. Sure, you're going to have MSG in your, in your natural food and your broccoli, but just don't add it to your food. Your body has been able to tolerate it at that level. Just don't need to add it as much. You know, mm. Minimize mm. it. It's, it's worse than you think. So watch out for the food colorings. Check, mm. the, check those numbers as well too, Steve. Especially Maybe the brown you could, ones. Especially the brown ones. Who knew? Um, anyway, Steve, maybe you can put up a list of the ones that uh, specifically to avoid onto the website. That would be great so yep. that people can have a look so that sure. they know which ones are... Pretty much all the ones proved in Australia are the ones you <laughs> You've got to avoid. Um, and obviously with regards to MSG and the yep. glutamates, you, you know, be aware of that as well too. Um, Steve, we've run out of time. We have. It's an hour and a half. Uh, we'll edit that down. Okay. Well, this has been great. I love these ones. Thanks, Steve. It's always good getting when's, when's Matt you alone. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> when's he back? Who cares? Who cares? Um, all right, guys. Thanks, and we'll be back next week. Absolutely. See you then. See you then.